Okay, keeping in mind that we're taking steps towards understanding complex sorting, let's take a step back and talk about functions that work with other functions. Now, so far, we've seen functions that take arguments and return values, and those functions work um, pretty reliably. Um, they're used all the time, so we know exactly how they work. Um, if I uh, want to take, you know, convert any argument or maybe get the length of the argument, maybe round a number, anything I might want to do, a function uh, is understood to usually take arguments and usually return values. Oftentimes it's one argument and one value. We've also been writing our own functions or we've been filling in functions um, as part of the homework. What I want to show you now is something called map. Map is a function that's really fundamentally different from other functions because it actually uses another function. Now, as you can see on line 7, map takes two arguments. But what are those arguments? Well, we can see that the second argument is a list. But what's the first argument? What is stir? You may remember stir as a function that takes an argument and returns the string value of that argument. In fact, it'll take just about anything as an argument and it'll convert it to a string representation. So that's how str works. x is an integer, sx is a string. The string sx is the same value as the int xx, but it's just a or the int x, but it's just a string. Uh, that's what str does. Now look closely at map map is taking stir as an argument. This is very new. In fact, it's so new that they have a name for it. It's called a higher order function. A higher order function is a function that works with other functions. So if map is taking stir as an argument, what is it doing with it? Uh, you may even notice that we're not calling stir. If we were calling stir, it would look like this. That would be calling string, right? The stir function and converting something to a string. But map isn't doing that. Map is actually taking stir as an argument. What this means is that we're passing the stir function to map. We're giving it to map. We're giving it to map to use. And look at the result. Don't worry about the list part here. That can be explained uh, some other time. The main point is that the resulting list from map is a list of strings. A list of strings where each item has been, has been converted to stir. Pretty amazing because what map has done has, is it, it has called the function that we passed on each item individually. Now it's important to understand that map applies the function to each item individually. This is something that is key to understanding complex sorting. The function is getting used by map to modify each item, to change each item in some way. Not the original list, but the resulting list. The, result, the list that comes back has a list of changed items. We could do other things as well. If we, for example, had a group of strings, we could convert each one to int. How would we do that? We'd simply use the int function. Now, we can run this one this time. Now when we run it, we should be able to see that we get four integers. Now, the sky's the limit when it comes to this. I could convert them all to floats, I believe. Actually, maybe these strings wouldn't work. Oh, it did work. Whatever function I want to apply, I can get the result. What if I were to apply len? In fact, you may want to stop this and ask yourself, if I applied len to every item in items, what result would I get? If it applied len to every single one of these items and I got back a four item list, what would be in each item? Maybe pause the video and think about it for a second. All right, let's run it. One, 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 one. Was that your guess? Here, I'll make a little, uh, make some longer strings here. Now, hopefully it'll be one, three, one, two. 
1312. Len got applied to every item in the sequence. That's what map does. It applies a function to every item in a sequence. Now, we're not really here to learn about map. We are going to learn about sorted, but when we talk about using a function to modify a sort, which is really what complex sorting is, using a function to modify a sort, we want to use map as the visual model. It's very clear, I hope, that len is getting applied four times. Map is doing the applying, though. Map is the one that's calling len. Map is taking each item, calling the function, and whatever comes back from the function, that's the value that goes into the resulting list. So anything we want to do can be done using that function. The idea, though, is that it's going to apply equally to all of them. I could pass upper, for example, and as you can see, the letters were uppercase. So whatever I'd like to do to each item can be done using map. What I do is I pass it a function. I give map the function. Map uses the function. It calls the function for each item. And the results of each function call is what goes into the resulting list. Now, we're going to apply this to sorted next, but this is the first understanding. Functions like map and sorted apply a f another function. And I'll put that in star emphasis to each item in a sequence. 